You have a clip of church, Lee? No. I've, I've, <laughs> I, I, I went through a, like a shoplifting phase, but nothing, not a church. I robbed the bar mitzvah once. It's one of the most embarrassing things I ever did. You know, I still think about it once a week at night. Did you take it from the bar mitzvah boy? The no, kid? I think I'm from the bar mitzvah guy from 2002. No, yeah. I, no I thought it was like the, uh, like the I was, bar or something. I was bartending, and they had a back room. And I was at, out, I was at a country club. And it was I used to be a banquet bartender, a union banquet bartender. And they had fucking suspended me. <laughs> for close to nine to ten months, they had suspended me because of fire, uh, tardiness and not showing up and not calling. As a bartender? As a bartender in New York City. Okay. And I'm robbing them blind. Everybody's a bartender. Yes. Oh yeah, of course. Everybody's <laughs> robbing them blind. <laughs> Every job I had as a kid, it was all about how Yeah, many, how much how, you how, could how, rob them. Exactly. It was fucking terrible. Every job. Terrible. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> and for peanuts, like it was just garbage. Yeah, we I, just wanted five dollars. What were we talking about? Uh your your bartending gig where they, so they sent me you. to this fucking so I'm out of work, guys, and I'm just stealing for a living. I'm just waking up in the morning, going for it, whatever. I'm putting a suit on, I'm going in buildings. <laughs> I'm a fucking creepy motherfucker. So like, you know, somebody would get up to go to the bathroom, I'd rob their office, you know, whatever they had, the, the, the petty cash box. Uh, it was terrible, they brought me, fucking terrible. I think of all that shit. So that I get a call one day, hey. You're back in the union. Are you available Saturday? I'm like, fuck yeah. They're like, this country club needs a bartender. First day there. I didn't even wait a week. First day fucking there is a bar mitzvah. And they're putting envelopes. I don't know what the, what's in the envelopes. I'm just sitting there. And they keep coming back to me with bags of gifts with envelopes in them. And I'm just putting them back there. And finally I see a couple come in with a kid, a Jewish kid. And the guy takes money from his wallet, cash, and puts it in this envelope, licks it. And when the mother comes out, he gives it to the mother or the cat. I don't know who the fuck it was. So when they would stack up, they'd come to me and go, put those envelopes in the back. I just saw it, and I remember what color it was. <laughs> I opened that envelope up. There was fucking a deuce in there or something, 300 bucks. I go, wait a second. I got 100 envelopes here. I hit the jackpot. I'm just going to walk out of here with the fucking envelopes. That's how crazy I was. But I took 20 of them. I ripped them open. And whoever had a check, I just threw it in the garbage. And whoever had cash. You didn't even let them keep the checks? Fuck no, they were ripped open. They're going to know that somebody ripped them open. Fuck it, at least there's a check. Fuck it, what are you going to do? You gotta, there's got to be a victim there. And I fucking took the money, it was like a thousand bucks. And at the end of the shift, I just left. And I threw away the ones I had ripped open. What a creepy fucking thing to do. That's how much of a creep I was. And I was a grown man. When I did. There's a fucking pizza place over there. I go to Danielle's. Yeah. It's okay. Nice yeah. people, nice owners. They've gotten broken into three times. People are hungry Six right months, now. Right. The other night I drove by there on Laurel King and I was parked at the light. And I sat there at the light and I lowered the window. Because I used to be a burglar. Of course. If you smash that window, the whole neighborhood hears it. He said that all three times. The camera. Didn't catch it? No, caught it. He oh. he, he got he call he wakes up, he calls the cops, he's watching them on the camera on his phone. As they're going in, going, for, he goes, I leave $40 in here at night. But the point of the story is that I was sitting there. There's a gas station that's open 24 hours. There's a Jack in the Box that's open 24 hours. And there's a Subway sandwich on the corner that's in there hidden next to a Starbucks. Nobody heard. Like, he's like, it's the weirdest thing. I sat there in the car. I know as a burglar, if I would break that, the way it, it would echo. It would just echo. There's a yeah. Sprint store there. I mean, it's tough to be a burglar now. Fuck, there's cameras everywhere. There's cameras everywhere in people's houses. And you ever catch them on the news how they get confused? <laughs> <laughs> and they take their camera off to scratch their head. <laughs> and, the, and the camera gets them right there. You're like, what yeah, the all, fuck? Bro, it's fucking hard in here. It would be so <laughs> fucking hard to do anything anymore. Like, I think of the shit I used to do, and I would have been busted. Trusted. Oh, uh, I would, I would like steal their cell phone and subscribe to George Press stories on it. All right, I'm a subscriber. I'm gonna do some shit. Uh, I don't know that about cell phones, but I would just be fucking robbing shit. I used to rob houses, but never like I, I was oh, fuck Joey. I wanted shit, dog. So when I was like 18, I wouldn't rob a house, but like if a rich ass, no disrespect, but 
rich ass white girl invited me to her crib. Oh, it was going down. Come on, yeah. dog. The age, listen, from the age of sixteen to thirty, everything I did was a case. <laughs> everything. If you invited me to your house, you just put yourself on a list for me to rob you. I looked around. <laughs> like if you invited me to your house, like I, that's what I would do. <laughs> I am a security expert. When I look at your house, I can tell you if you're going to get robbed and why you're going to get robbed and how you're going to get robbed. Yeah. There's just different percentages. You know, if you leave your backpack in the front seat of your car oh, there, that's with your sign. computer, they're going to they're gonna br- br- break it. If you put it on the front floor and the, black, and the backpack is black and they don't see it, they're not going to break yep, it. Yeah, cover it with the sweater It's or really fucking stupid what life is about. You know, in the... One thing I never did was I hated car stereos. Like, there was just so many things that I wouldn't do. There was a point for years that in America, if you robbed the car stereo, you couldn't do nothing with it. Because once you took it out, you couldn't play in another car. Mm-hmm. Unless it was aftermarket. Like, if you went and bought, like, a whatever. But if you took, like, a Chrysler stereo out, there's nothing you could do with it. Even if you put it in another Chrysler. It was fucking... There's so many crimes that people do for little shit and they cause so much havoc. Yeah. And it pisses me off. Like if you leave dollar bills in the certain middle of your thing, you know how you pay for tolls? Yeah. You put change in there. They're gonna break the if window. If you put singles in there, they're gonna break your window. They're gonna break your window at four in the morning for, for three four fucking dollars. Yep. And now you gotta pay 150? And now, yeah, and now you just paid 150. This When I go into a place, I look at the security of the place. And I look at the people and I ask if I go to the bathroom. I love the people that you go to the bathroom and you have to walk through a bedroom and they got a jewelry box right there. Yeah. You're going down. <laughs> You're going down. I'm going to get the case of the shits and steal one of your wedding. I mean, it was just dumb. Like when people would have parties, uh, I would rob parties all the time. Like if people would say, oh, yeah, it's a party. It's a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. He's having a party in Tenafly. That's the first places you went. <laughs> And next thing you know, you're on the second floor under the bed, <laughs> fucking with the little girl's fucking pony bank and the, you know <laughs> piggy bank and shit. It's fucking embarrassing, dog. It's embarrassing the shit. You've done do. some crazy shit. I've done some shit. I used to break into this house so much that they would leave me notes. <laughs> like fuck you. Hey, wipe your feet, asshole. Like I would rob them once every ninety days for like two years. Oh, shit. I robbed them once every 90 days, a drug dealer. Why didn't they put a lock on the door? They did everything they could. I would just rob them just to let them know they were stupid. Yeah. Just to let them know they were stupid. They had a back window that I could open like nothing. And and nothing pisses me off more than when I rob you and I come back and you still haven't fixed that problem. (laughs) I will rob you again just out of principle. I robbed that fucking apartment. It was a fucking gay dude who sold (laughs) drugs. And I knew he had to work. Like, I knew him through another gay guy, and I knew he had a work. <laughs> and I would rob him certain hours. Damn. The, like, the first three places I robbed of him, like, the first time he left money in, like, a jar in his, uh, like, like when on he, a dresser or yeah, something? Yeah, like, on a dresser. Oh, I man. just stuck my hand in there, and it was $450. In those Fuck, days. that's on money. On a Friday morning. Oh. And there was, like, an ounce of Coke somewhere. Oh, oh, my, oh, my God. And then I waited, like, 90 days. He never accused me. And I went back again, and this time he hid it in his lover's room, and I robbed that one. <laughs> and then I went back like six months later, and I robbed him again for something else, for Coke again. And then after that, I waited, and I robbed him again, and I went to the first two spots, and both of them had notes like, fuck you, asshole. <laughs> oh, years shit. later, like. Why didn't you leave him a note back? Like, haha, I got you again. I don't have that type of time, Lee. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Let's say he's a stenographer. I'm fucked up. <laughs> he was an FBI dude that we were talking about. I, I broke into a cheese shop one night. I was at a bar. <laughs> I was 19 years old, guys. I still had the bug. In those days, you know how some people drink and do stupid things? Of course. I would drink and steal. Right. I would go crazy. Now, could you do it sober or did you have to be? Did you have to have a drink in you? No. You know what I mean? Like, like I would be home for a week and a half. Yeah. And to unbreak the homesickness. Like, I've broken all these things down in my head. You know, like, I, I was addicted not to drugs at that time. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was a reefer head at that time. When I, moved, when I moved to Colorado the first time, I understood what it was to be a real hippie. It's not those guys with the long hair that no. stink. It's an attitude. These guys li- were laid back. Nothing bothered me. I never understood what laid back was. Yes. Until I went to Snowmass Village the first time in 1983. It really 
So I was telling these guys that one night I had this bedroom. Like, when I got to Basalt, I moved into a room that had belonged to somebody else that he had to go home because there was an emergency in his family. So all I did when I got there was take the sheets off, flip over the mattress, wash the sheets, and they were mine. (laughs) That had become my bed. So when we moved out of there, the kid came back and took all his stuff. So the apartment I got with my buddy basically had nothing. I mean, nothing. When we moved in there, there was a black and white TV, a table, an oak table with a fucking milk crate under it, a couch that stunk, uh, and there was nothing. And the rooms were nothing. So I, at first I put like a, a fucking uh, mat down, and I put a sheet over it, and I slept like a fucking Indian, like just on the floor, <laughs> like Bruce Lee and Fist of Fury, <laughs> under a tent and shit, like in your room. And the apartment was clean. It was fucking tremendous. The paint, I mean, it, it was uh, Creekside Apartments, I think, at the time. Mm. And they were fucking pretty much new, you know. And uh, his brother, the, my roommate's brother, also from my neighborhood, was a carpenter on a job site oh. that was the biggest building in Snowmass Village at the time. It looked like a battleship. That's what people called it. They built a fucking battleship <laughs> up there. So one day I went to meet him, and I go, I thought these things were being built, but they had already a, a condo that was had the furniture, the flowers, the towels, the fucking bath mats, something out of a fucking magazine cover. Like a model home, Like I think? a model home. Nice. So I go in there, and I see this shit. Like an Ikea display. Yeah, and I go real. home, I tell Jim, I go, Jim, I saw something very interesting today. He goes, what? I go, you know the way your brother works? They got apartments that have fucking got furniture. He goes, Joey, we can't do that. I go, listen, <laughs> you don't have to do nothing. Let me go snoop around. Yeah. <laughs> and on a Sunday night, I went up there. The door was open. Damn. Like the realtor left the door open. Jeez. I went in, put the light on. I took everything I could. I put it in a circle, including a mattress and a fucking <laughs> box spring. And I made three or four climbs. Today, I could never do it. No. And I did it between 9 and like 2 in the morning. Wow. With fucking wheelbarrows. And then he finally got up. He was drunk. He finally got up. And he helped me carry it. Like and nobody loads. woke up? None of that shit? No Nothing. One are... There was wow. nobody in the building. There was oh, no construction. Yeah. And they didn't go like apartment to apartment looking? No, 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 no. They, was, they didn't know. And I went into the fucking one room. And it was all the tools. And Jimmy's like, let's rob tools. <laughs> and I'll never Fuck. forget, he got let's like a bar and stuck it in and put his feet up against the thing. <laughs> and he started pulling back and it just broke and he landed on his back. He's like, ugh. <laughs> but I, we went and furnished our whole apartment. That's it amazing. went like, we went from fucking zero to a hundred towels, bat mats. From an air bed oh, to yeah, a yeah. full display oh, of everything. Oh my God, we had everything, a new couch. <laughs> and finally, the brother knocked on the door and then he goes, hey, what's going on? <laughs> he was telling me it wasn't you guys, and he came in and started laughing. He goes, "Trust me, I was thinking of doing it." Well, all right. He goes, "Throw me the lamp, and I won't say nothing." And that was the end of that. We had all this new furniture. That's kind of on them to build an apartment, not have it be completed, and furnish it empty. That you're asking for that to fucking happen. and no security with Joey no Diaz security. around in 1983. You're crazy. Come on, <laughs> you couldn't leave a thing of my. I was in. I was in the heyday of my heyday. What year is it? It's 83. I'm tw- I'm 20 years old. I'm living in D12, the bottom of the something apartments. D is the fourth building. Uh-huh. It's my friend, me and Jimmy Burkle. And I'm not making a bad living. I'm not doing the, I'm not living the life of Riley, but I got a job. I'm taking classes at night, and I got my eyes open. And that's the type of town that you just have your eyes open. Yeah. You're going to pick up a $1,000 a week by mistake because nobody's paying attention. Right. So you'll pick up a purse. <clears throat> you'll pick up a wallet. You'll pick a car. I mean, it was fucking crazy. I cannot describe it. But, you know, I, at that time I was living 24-7, which means nobody got a break. When I was 19, when I left Jersey the first mm-hmm. time, nobody got a break. What do you mean nobody got nobody a break? Nobody got a break, okay. So I get up in the morning, I probably got 30 bucks on me, I got two fives, 10 singles, and a 10. All right, I would hitchhike down the hill. If I could hitchhike to work, I would hitchhike to work. If not, I'd take the bus, but guess what? I wasn't paying the bus. I was gonna get it on the back and fucking walk off on the back. Right. And then I would get to work, and I'd work, at, I'd work for eight hours at work, and you and Lee brought lunches, I'd take Lee's sandwich <laughs> and your soda. 
<laughs> you know, I was just a fucking miserable fuck until I didn't give a fuck because I knew I was going to keep this job, so I'm just eating that fucking sandwich. Sometimes I throw it away. One guy took... One time I... When He's I taking first, your sandwich, Luke. I, listen, at Mazback mm -hmm. Century Hall, when I first quit... I, listen to me, though. Here's the crazy thing. When I quit high school, I quit to go to Mazback Century Hardware. And one day I was downstairs in the fucking... Uh, I was a warehouseman. And something happened. I go, break time. And I go, listen, I don't want to take a break. And I go, Joey, you can't do this. You have to go to the break room. And I went to the break room. And I'm sitting there. It's a true story, guys. I'm 17. I'm stupid. But I don't give a fuck. I probably had $2 in my pocket. I go upstairs... I'm sitting there and I go, what the fuck am I doing up here? And they got like, in those days, they didn't have microwave sodas, yeah, yeah. like that. But there was a, a refrigerator and there was all these brown lunches, right? Like, and I saw one and I just took this motherfucker <laughs> out and I opened it up and God forbid, good googly moogly. It was that dude's kosher meal. No, oh. it was like a, a, a fucking, like a, a Philly cheesesteak. Wrapped like he had bought it at a store. Yeah. So it didn't belong to nobody. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, maybe. <laughs> what do you mean he bought it from his yeah. friend? Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't, like, maybe, like, on Tuesdays they order from, <laughs> from fucking Johnny's. Yeah. And this was the, and that, that, this is for everybody. But I got, it's like 10 30, 11 o'clock. I'm up there and I'm looking. And this is a true story, Josh Wolf. Okay. And you know me and you, we go back a long time. I forgot about this one. And all of a sudden, I go up and I take the thing out. And it's the first thing I take out. It was still even kind of warm. And I fucking <laughs> take it out. I'm eating this Bible. It's got a you who in there. It was like, it was me. There was a napkin and shit. <laughs> there was a note. Yeah, was, a note from the mom. No, there was like a napkin. And all of a sudden, do oh you know that God, Joey? I'm sitting there and I finish wiping my hand. And thank God, I've always been a gentleman. I wiped the table, and I threw the stuff in the garbage, and then I wiped it again. <laughs> and at that time, I wasn't friends with nobody. Like, I had just been there for maybe three weeks. I didn't know nothing. But <laughs> I still had another 15 minutes upstairs, so I just went and washed my hands, and, and I went by the window and just looked outside. <laughs> and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I'm looking out this window, Josh and I hear like three people come in by me. They got nothing to do with me, so I don't look. Right. And they're talking. Nah, bah, bah, bah. Who you got tonight? I got the Steelers, you know. And all of a sudden I hear, all right, all right, let's do this. I hear, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me. And that's when I turn around. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. So he goes, God damn it. Some of this stuff. Now, this guy at the now at this time, bro, I'm a little on the crazy side. My mom's been dead two years. <clears throat> I think I want to be a gangster. Yeah, you know. But let's face it, I wasn't going up against this. This dude was five eleven, yoked, black, mm -hmm. you know, angry, and now somebody took his, his food. Fucking food. Oh. <laughs> he took the fucking door, and when he slammed it, it just landed in his hand. Now, if, that, if Lee would have slammed the door and it would have landed in his hand, Lee would have just dropped it. Yeah. This guy held the door in his hand. And he's like, who took my motherfucking sandwich? Who the fuck took my sandwich? And I started shitting. I, was yeah. like, I better not have an onion on my teeth and shit. Oh, my God. He fucking slammed the door. He fucking went through all the fucking sandwiches in there. He ran downstairs. Who the fuck took my sandwich? Who the fuck came up here? And I'm right there like 20 minutes. And he looked at me. Who the fuck? You see anybody? I go, no. <laughs> I just got here. I didn't even know what was going on up here. This is the first time I've been up here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know why I'm up here. Yeah, I don't even oh know what's God, happening up here. I ran out of there and I was like, oh, shit. That's where you put your food when you, you know, in those days there was just one freezer. Yeah. You now you go to an office building, they have... But I like how you said it was like a Philly cheesesteak, so it didn't belong to anybody. Yeah, it fucking belonged to somebody. Whoever put it in the refrigerator. But I thought, listen. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he was like, if he, they bought it at a store. So yeah, so I guess it's for everybody. <laughs> I thought, you know, since it, if I would have took it out and it would have been in a container, I would have gone, oh, this is Oh, you mean like from, a Tupperware? Yeah, 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 this is from somebody's house. But when I saw it in the thing, I go, mm -hmm. you never know. Maybe 
the people Maybe this deliver. is for everybody. This is for everybody. Yeah. Fuck it. I was hungry in those days. I didn't. I ate that sandwich in two bites. It was delicious. And after that, we kind of became friends, and I would bust his balls about that from time to time. Did you ever tell him it was you? No, but I would, like, torment him. Psst, come you here. love that shit. I got my eye on up there because somebody took my motherfucking sandwich. I'm telling you, dog. There's a thief in this motherfucker. I know how to give air to those situations. Oh, you love that I shit. I love to fan those fuckers. Yeah. So I got him for a while. Yeah. One of the sickest things I ever did was I got involved with, well, they were my neighborhood friends. It was like Sabatino and... Carlos Perez. Chicha Bastich. No, Chicha Bastich was a <laughs> Kennedy school guy. This was the giving out Kateris crew. It was, wow. In those days, it was Carlos Perez, me, Sabatino, uh, Dominic Special, God bless his soul. Uh, a couple other kids I may forget. There was a soccer field. It's called Schutzen Park. Schutzen. Right in Union City. Yeah. It's been there since fucking before Hitler. <laughs> and it's a German place that serves German food, but they also cater it out. You can have parties there. Oh, yeah? So they have all the political parties right. there. When we were kids, they practiced baseball back there. North Bergen had the rights to practice Little League baseball back mm -hmm. there. And there was a soccer field back there. So on the weekends, the German soccer team would play back there. And yeah. blah, blah, blah. Right. And it was basically, it had stands. Yeah. I don't know what you could fit in there. I don't know, 2,000, 3,000. Yeah, it's a park. But it was covered by this tin thing. Oh, it was covered. Oh, okay. It was covered by this tin roof. And for years, for years, starting, I mean, I remember going up there when I was like 10 and hitting balls with the, the Todd brothers. By the way, one of them just died, the Jeff Todd, Jim Rich Todd, and Vanacek. And we'd go up there on our <laughs> yeah, own and play ball. Right. But there was a guy back there. That his name was The Butcher. And if he caught you back there, he'd chase you with a knife oh, and a German fuck. shepherd. Oh, shepherds with a dog back then. But the beautiful of it, we used to go up there and ride the motorcycles, and that would really drive him crazy. <laughs> he would chase you and say all those uh, zig howls yeah, and shit. shit. Right. But we figured out, uh, one day somebody told me, I used to, when my mother first died, I had all these different friends, and I had good people in my life. But I had this one particular kid, Mike Denny. Everybody called him the devil. Like people would go, he's the devil. Dog. Yeah. I took a liking to Mike yeah. Denny. Mike Denny was a short wrestler. I went to Lehigh. Lehigh, yeah. And uh, but he just had him. You know, you know, he was one of those guys that <laughs> every time you did something with him, do trouble. It, you know, you came up short. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. You're not gonna believe what I happened. Know, the guy gave me three hundred instead of five. Yeah. And I tolerated it for about a year, and right. I lost him as a friend. <laughs> yeah. But I will tell you, he was a money-making machine. When yeah. it came to make money at night, the problem with him was he robbed all the wrong people. Right. His father owned a ship refurbishing company. So when a ship lands in Newark or right. Hoboken in those ports, days, yeah. after six months at sea, right. they come in, weld off all the barnacles, oh, okay. repaint it. It's a it. big job. It's they big, do, and they get year company. contract. Yeah, it's a big job. Well, big he company. would go back at night and steal the holes. Oh Christ! And steal the fucking shit that belonged to the ship. Oh, the new and yeah, yeah, he was just a fucking crazy. moron. That's crazy. But I'm snorting coke with him. Yeah, listen, to Aerosmith, uh, get your yeah, wings in an RX-7. Right. He's got to be 20, and I'm 16. Right. And that little crew we put together one day. Somebody mentioned that that tent. Above the soccer field, right. <laughs> then you could sell it. It's worth something. Yeah, like copper. Like copper. Like copper wiring. Listen, oh everybody my. in my neighborhood got a ratchet set. <laughs> and at night, <clears throat> before you went out, Lee, you had you took out your rattiest clothes, <laughs> and we'd go up there, me and you, every wow. night at 7 o'clock, because Butcher would get off. Butcher was off between was 7 and 8. He took oh. a nap. So we get up there, climb, and oh, ratchet those things take off. Big fucking throw them off. off. Yeah. You had to slide off or sure. you fell off. It was fucking scary. <laughs> and I mean, little by little, you saw sections disappearing. <laughs> yeah. Lee, it was like <clears throat> fucking. What could he do? It was like hey, little by little, every night. And then then I then somebody else caught on. <laughs> yeah. So I would steal a sheet. He would steal a sheet. And then he told his friend right. and his two friends started stealing two sheets. Yeah. So now we almost turned into a war. Like, wait a second. <laughs> this is our turf here. We've had this first. Me and the devil. Schutzen Park is ours. Carlos yeah. and Sabatino yeah. had this first. <laughs> they, dog, they fucking stripped every piece yeah. of fucking tin. Schutzen Park had to put a tarp over it, a paper <laughs> That's tarp great. for the soccer That's game. That's great. That was a hustle for a whole fucking summer. <laughs> and we were getting like $55 a thing. There were so many people I used to bring things to. Yeah, those I don't that know. Would pay me I don't money. know where those people are anymore. 
I used to have, have, a, have a transmission guy. Yeah. That would give me money for sawdust. No. Because they filled the sure. transmission yeah, with yeah. sawdust. Yeah. Where do you get sawdust? Oh, a lumber yard. Lumber yard. It's very a smart. Lumber yard. So I used to work at a lumber yard. They don't clean up every day? And when I got the job, the kid that had the job before me, he told me right off the bat, he goes, listen, the morning you got to steal. <laughs> because if you don't steal, they're going to know I was stealing. Number oh. two, this, I have existing contracts. Are you kidding me? And I go, what are you talking about? He goes, on Saturdays, a guy comes in and buys 40 sheets of plywood. He'll give you $400 cash. Give me 100 from now on. And I got another guy that comes in on Thursdays and gets 20 sheets of marine. Because marine plywood was $64 a sheet, four right. by eight. Right. He would say, and it was uh, galvanized, so yeah. you could put it on boats. Yeah, yeah. So he would say, "Give him, charge him twenty a sheet." I, I mean, there was days. It's a I, lot to remember. There was days we, me and four gorillas would load the back up, and at the end of the day, there was no sheets left. And I was, a, I was a junior in high school. Yeah, yeah. I was robbing them blind, <laughs> those poor fucking people. Yeah, yeah. But there was a family at a transmission place. And they would tell me when the barrels get filled up, give us a call. So sure. I wasn't allowed to sweep and put uh, in the thing. I would sweep and put in barrels. And once I'd get five barrels, they'd give me like 100 cash, which was every week. I got uh, 100 cash from the long the time. Great. The job paid me six bucks an hour. Yeah, you got to make a I living. But I probably made a thousand yeah, you a week make... out of that. Right, right. They had an old school register. So which meant if, if you spent $8, it would eight, come up yeah, $8. $8. But if, if you came in, I'd say, how you doing today? Oh, nothing. How you doing, Joey? Nice to meet you. What are you looking for? I'm redoing my basement. I need 10 sheets of 4x8 plywood at $44 a piece. You know, 10 sheets, that's 440 Right. I knew that plus tax. Right. I would fucking do the register. Mm -hmm. I would do it on my computer. There was a calculator. Uh -huh. And I mean, the register would be packed. There would be four salesmen at the <laughs> thing. But right in front of them. They didn't know that I had loaded the sheets on. I would take the sheet and ba 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 ba, do the tax like for four forty yeah. plus tax, and instead of ringing in four eighty eight, I'd ring in eighty eight, and the guy would give me four hundred eighty eight dollars, and I put eighty eight in the register and keep four hundred sure. and lock the register. I did this every day. Yeah, well, no kidding. That's how I snorted coke my sophomore and junior year. Yep. If it's two in the afternoon and you ain't high, go fuck yourself. Get out of my face. I want you around me like I want cancer in my ball sack. You know what I'm saying? You're going to come around here looking at me with your fucking white eyes, thinking that, you know, I'm going re to reform. Go fuck yourself. My morning starts at 5.30 a.m. Either you're there or you're square. You know what I'm saying?